Hi everyone, I'm Anawat from Tokyo University, International Research Institute of Disaster Science. I would like to share you my recently fi research findings to two topics for, for this workshop. Let me start by sharing my, my screen. So as you can see, this is my title, Fertility Functions and Loss Functions of Tsunami for Supporting Disaster Preparedness Recovery and Reconstructions. Again, I'm Anawat from Tohoku University. We had the experience of 2011 tsunami, and which, which will be reflected to my uh, presentation and also um, some, some the first part of my presentation will be related um, based on the damage data from the 2002 tsunami in happened in 2018 in Indonesia. So um, again, um, the first topic will be related to the um, tsunamis in Indonesia, including the one uh, happened in 2004 Indonesian tsunami. 2018 um, Palu and also 2018 um, Sunda Street. This work ha actually um, published in uh, online in NHSS, so you please uh, have a look in, in more detail. Um, especially this this one, we, we compare um, fertility curves for um, both seismic and non seismic tsunamis. So second topic will be um, related to the 2011 tsunami affected area. We have done some interview to industry. We asked them about the um, damage to, to their facilities and also the, 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 the recovery or the downtime related to the earthquake um, ground shaking on the tsunami floor depths. So the first topic, um, as I mentioned, I we were um, focused on three um, tsunami in Indonesia. The first one um, in 2004, Indonesian tsunami um, with the um, large earthquake ground shaking and the of of course um, long period tsunami that caused large tsunami in Madagascar, etc. But on the other hand, the same tsunami also arrived um, Thailand, and the but because of of this um, epicenter was uh, far away from from Thailand, so the the damage was only caused by the long periods tsunami only. On the other hand, in two thousand eighteen, there were two two big tsunami as well. But the the second uh, number two the two uh, the Sunda Strait tsunami, it was caused by the flank fa failure of the uh, Krakatau volcano after the eruption. So so for this one there was no ground shaking, only um, short period tsunami, caused the damage. For the the third one was Palu because of the strike slip, even though the ground shaking was also strong, but um, tsunami was mainly um, generated by land, suddenly landslide, which is also a short wave period. And also the, the ground shaking caused also liquefaction, which is not um, observed in the case of 2004. So once again, um, we would like to compare or study the characteristic of during damage from the different types of tsunami and the earthquake and also with or without ground shaking as you can see from this slide Thailand and Indonesia with or without ground shaking and wave period and also the impact from the liquefaction and so it comes to our research question that we would like to see um, the building characteristic from the reflected by the building fertility curves and uh, depending on the parameters which is the wave period ground shaking and the liquefaction and because of the time uh, constraint um, 
actually we did some simulation to see the impact from also flow velocity and the force but uh, for simplification and a comparison i would like to show you only the the flow depths for different um, events so let's have a look at the result so you can see that um uh, the black one is for indian ocean tsunami in phuket and uh, the red one you know same uh sorry the the, the green one is also in Indonesian tsunami, but in Madanje. So you can just see that the green and the black, when you compare together, um, the green one, the earthquake ground shaking, but the black one without ground shaking. So you can see that the, with the same flow depths, they, they had uh, lower damage. And if you compare the, the green one and the red one, which is the red one is the industrial straight so without ground shaking you can see that also um, the damage of the tsunami is also getting smaller compared to the case of tsunami plus the ground shaking but if you have have a look at the the palu tsunami curve um, because of the liquefaction so even the flow depth is very small you can see that the damage is already um, getting start at the beginning at the very low flow depths but you can see this discrepancy risk some discontinuity or the discrepancy here um, we, we would like to claim that we have very um, less number of building dam uh, data in this area so it, it contains some kind of large uncertainty similar to to this area but in, in general, so once again, um, we would like to, to conclude that um, the longer wave period of the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami may have increased the likelihood of the complete, complete damage rather than um, short period. Of course, for the short wave period, it may, may have um, caused very uh, high um, pressure during the, the breaking, but um, um, currently from the, from the curve that we, we could draw from the damage data we, we, this is what we can say and um, as similar to what I have mentioned the ground shaking also caused um, damage um, rather than non ground shaking like in Sunda Strait or in Thailand and also the liquefaction is also very um, important so the next topic is related to the the first one as well but um, the first one we mean just i just show example of, of uh, buildings but and also the my my with my colleagues recently we have published one paper which is the structural damage of the port industry but still um, we have to uh, also the question if the what what is the the damage or loss from the, the the damage to the facilities and the, the downtime or the delay of reproduction so to fulfill to fulfill this um, gap we we have con we conduct uh, interviews to some industry inside our uh, Miyagi prefectures um, why we we still have to ask or interview these uh, industries because Actually, it's not. It's not only two thousand Indian, uh, two thousand eleven, um, Tohoku earthquake, with magnitude of nine, maximum intensity of seven, but actually in two thousand sixteen, and also this year in February, March, and, and May, we also had, um, very large earthquake, with uh, almost reached the the maximum intensity, and also in some case, um small to moderate tsunami as well and so we, we can also fulfill, get, get more inf information for a moderate earthquake as well so this is just a distribution of the, the ground shaking so just jump to the um, the result because of the time limitation so I would uh, first first slide this is related to the damage criteria so we we, we ask the the industry um, imagine if uh, 
what will be the minimum um, flow depth that will, will cause damage to your factories or some question like if 50% uh, damage or 30% damage to your factory what will be the required um, flow depths or something like that so from the result you can see that for example the cargo handling or warehouse and distribution first, first uh, factory um, it has similar trend but um, if the flow depth is higher than two meter it can be reached the, the fully damaged for the food as well um, um, it has uh, sorry uh, it has some dif difference but um, in, in general if the the flow depth is reached or higher two meter it can cause fully damage but uh, depending on the the size of the factory or the if they have some um, preparation of the flood where they already um, increase the land elevation of the the factory before the tsunami or if they they have a facility um, located in a high ground um, even um, higher uh, a bit higher uh, flow depth it can have less lesser um, damage um, similar to the many manufacturing industry you can see that uh, the, the mechanical pressing and the feed manufacturing they have similar trend that if the the flow depth is larger than two meter they expect that 100 percent damage but for the ice making company because of the the nature of their service um the ice it's actually for the, the fishing boat they have to to build uh, uh, create make the ice in the second floor so that um, they can shoot ice to the the truck in the the first floor so that means that the main facilities or equipments are located in the second floor so that even the tsunami flow depths in one or two meters it will cause very small or limited damage in terms of the downtime or the time for the interruption of the the production you can see that it has no big difference in for the cargo or warehousing distribution company but uh, it has um, largely dif different um, to food industry depending on the flow depths of course um, less smaller flow depths they have more higher potential to to be recovered but um, we, we also learned from our interview that even the flow depth is pretty high three or four meters but if they they can still reduce the structure that means they don't have to to move to the new land um, move the equipment, they can wash or um, repair the equipment. In that case, they can um, restart their production quite soon. Similar to the manufacturing industry, um, even the the blue and the, the green light, it has similar flow depths, but um, depending on the other um, um, parameters or condition, it can have different um, speed of recovery in terms of petrochemical industry as you can see that it can just abruptly change for after one year so because of the many it related to the fire or other critical safety reasons so it the, the the recovery or the downtime curve has to be like this and 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 also I forgot to mention that the actually this um, this one even though the intensity of the earthquake only five plus uh, but still it, it, it is large enough to cause the uh, this interruption to the petrochemical industry because even only the ground shaking can also cause a fire in the in the factory. So, um, similar to the the second conclusion that um, even though less no tsunami or just warning tsunami advisory, but 
if the ground shaking is large enough, the petrochemical industry can be easily um, interrupt. And but in general, the if the flow depth of two meter, we can expect that um fu fully damage to the food industry. But for other industry, depending on the location of their main structure, they can have um uh, some somewhat larger um strength or less um vulnerability. So at the end of my talk, uh, I would like uh, to close and um, I wish that um, information on the, the building damage for facilities and also the other um, loss fun related information such as the loss to the facilities and also the, the downtime will be um, useful for all of you in terms of um, the rapid recovery, long-term reconstruction and also the preparation uh, before the disaster happened. Thank you for your attention.